Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody, and a happy Friday morning to you. All right, this is just going to be one long video, but we are covering a ton of information. You definitely don't want to miss the ending to this one. I brought my video receipts to back up everything I'm saying. All right, let's jump in and get there. Let's go. We're starting off this morning with Zara Tyndall, who was at the Burley Horse Trials in Lincolnshire yesterday, and she was wearing double denim. Everybody just loves that. Uh, she was walking around with her horse, who's named Class Affair. We've seen this horse before. We've seen her riding on the horse. And she was there because they were having the Land Rover Burley horse trials. Pretty cool. She and Mike decided to do this instead of be in Scotland. Good for them. And a big thank you as usual to Remulade Sauce for the information on all the outfits. I really like Zara. I really do. All right, moving on now to the big stuff for today. All right, one of the big stories that I think we should cover is what's going on with um, Harry's uh, visa, okay? So the Biden administration, it, it appears, has something to hide. But the truth is they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. If they release the information and it shows that Harry lied and said he wasn't on drugs, they're going to have to justify not throwing him out of the country after he's put in his book Spare all about his use of marijuana and cocaine and magic mushrooms. And these are things he's still currently using that he admits that he's using. But if the visa shows that he was truthful, that he admitted to being on all of these drugs, then once again, Biden administration is going to have to explain while they let him in, while other people who have done less were told they couldn't come in. In other words, he was given special treatment. And that's not the way it's supposed to work in the United States. Hence the new rules that are, are coming out. They want everybody to be treated fairly and it's pretty obvious that harry's getting special treatment mm -hmm. all right let's move on all right next up remember i told you yesterday that harry surprised people at a cinema and i told you that the audience was stacked that you know this was a setup okay so here's the first thing i want you guys to look at this first of all i want you to notice how empty the theater is there's really not that many people there Okay. Second of all, this private screening was sponsored by the USO in an area where there's a bunch of US military bases. So there you go. And none of the people were wounded warriors. So he was at, you know, I told you the article said he was at Chula Vista. Well, apparently that's on the US Mexico border. <laughs> San Diego is where the military bases are. There's no military presence there. It's very close to where Thomas Markle lives, but also remember Doria went to that thing about, you know, putting people together that were separated at the border. Uh-huh. I told you the audience was stacked. All right, moving on. Next up, people are putting out comments about this Invictus Games. As I told you yesterday, it's all about Harry. It's not about the Warriors. And that brings us to this next article that came out saying that there's, this is supposed to help the Sussex brand. So you know, they're basically saying that this is done because they're trying to reboot the Sussex brand. And let's not forget, once again, Harry talked about, I had no support, I had no love. And he's at the forefront of this whole five-part series about the injured veterans. And Megan just kind of pops in and pops out because the fan base wants to see her. But the problem is... Um, People really don't want to see Harry in this. They wanted to see the veterans, and the veterans have just been pushed to the side. Harry is the one who's making millions from Netflix. Netflix isn't paying anything to the Invictus, Invictus Games. Archwell, who after they tax whatever, is going to give money, but not Netflix. And then somebody who watched it pointed out that there was a soldier from South Korea who couldn't bring his family because they couldn't afford it. So if the family wanted to come, shouldn't the documentary have helped pay for their travel since Harry's making so much money? 
I mean, he's not the only one. There are veterans who wish they could attend, but they couldn't afford it. They can't afford their prosthetics. They have no idea how to get the help. And then they have to listen to, to Harry wax on. Yeah, I get it. Because of the backlash, people like this gentleman, his name is Gabriel George, have come out saying he's just like a brother. Ooh, we went scuba diving together in Hawaii. That must be when Harry arranged for a tour of the USS Arizona and stood there saluting American military that he's not got anything to do with. This gentleman is this gentleman who went scuba diving with Harry is a retired Navy corpsman. Now, he lost his right arm in a motorcycle accident, not in service. But still, the fact that these people think that they have to put out these kinds of articles to improve Harry's image says a lot. Now, we know that Harry has tried to rewrite history. And one of the things that he said, we all heard it, was that the news didn't do enough to report on what was going on back in Afghanistan. Uh, well, let me tell you, The Sun magazine isn't having any of that. They came right out and said, and I'm quoting right from the magazine, that not even a veteran whose service we admire will get away with claiming that the sun fell short in our coverage of the plight of our troops in Afghanistan. Not only did we stand up at every turn for our brave men and women, but we launched a campaign backing Help for Heroes in 2007, the year before Harry claims the media was ignoring them. Yep. A long list of war heroes and ex-military chiefs have now blasted the things that Prince Harry has said and said that his claims are absolutely offensive. Yep, ex-forces -com ex commander Lord Richard Dannett said, echoing the Queen, recollections may vary. I just said in 2007, before the first tour of Afghanistan, the sun launched a campaign backing the Help for Heroes charity, and it went on to raise 370 million pounds. Yes, and Harry is saying that they didn't do anything. Harry and the Queen went to the unveiling of a memorial for Afghan heroes in 2017 after the sun raised over a million pounds from readers. The Sun claims that they were front and center of the campaign to get the government to do more for PTSD sufferers. And the Sun also came up with the Millie's Award, which honors the very heroes that the Prince now says were overlooked. Interesting, because in 2011, Prince Harry is the one who gave the keynote speech and thanked everyone that helped put on this fabulous night. You know, one of those people that was apparently honored at those awards was a triple amputee who was given a Sun Military Award in 2013 for overcoming adversity. Yep. So offensive were his comments, thank you to this Twitter user for pointing this out, that one of the ex-military chiefs went on with Piers Morgan and had something to say about all of the allegations that was, just, just listen to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally, I have to say, I'm not interested in rehabilitating his image. I, I really don't care what his image is. I think the important thing is the wounded soldiers who take part in the Evictus Games. That is the only thing that's of any significance. And, I, you know, I would really question what, what stress he was under during his tenure of service in Afghanistan. He was, he was fighting at very, very remote distance. Not the kind of thing, in my view, that would result in in serious stress and PTSD compared to many of the other soldiers who lost limbs, had their lives shattered, and in some cases, tragically were killed. I think, you know, I, do, I don't think we should be looking at his image as being something of huge importance to this, except mm -hmm. in as much as he can bring publicity and, and bring public attention to these extremely brave soldiers who gave so much, not for any other reason. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't personally buy all the the need to rehabilitate his image, etc. I think this man nailed it, like right on the head. 
Nobody's interested in rehabbing his issues. And what stress was he under? Since apparently he was so far away from the front lines, even this guy is wondering what stress. Mm-hmm. You know, people are pointing out that in his speeches, he's got this self-righteous tone that suggests no one is doing enough about anything except for him, and they're saying that even though he's the one putting the light on these soldiers, um, they were maimed for doing what their country asked them to do. But then you want to warm to Harry and you're completely put off by his self-entitlement and his constant victimhood as if he's the only person in the world who's ever suffered. And that's it, exactly. That's what he wants you to think, and people are just so put off by it. Well, Sky News had Patrick Christie on. You know how much I love Sky News, and I really like Patrick Christie because he doesn't mince words, you know? Listen to this. Prince Harry has betrayed his family <laughs> so often already in his book, in his Netflix documentary. And then he reportedly reached out to his father and brother to make good again. Well, it turns out it could have been a very good thing that they said, no, uh, stay away, sunshine because he just cannot stop throwing them under the bus. It's like it's his business model. Here he is now complaining in a thing that he did for the Invictus Games, which is going to happen in uh, Germany, I believe, uh, that he was given no help when he came back from the army in Afghanistan, traumatised, and traumatised again by memories of his dead mother. Now, the odd thing is that only a few years ago, Prince Harry actually said that his brother had supported him, had told him to get help. It's all about timing. Yeah. And, you know, for me personally, you know, my, my brother, you know, bless him, he was a huge support to me and kept saying, you know, this is not right. This is not normal. You need to talk about stuff. It's OK. And, all this. and it, the timing wasn't right. Joining me from London is Patrick Christie's gun presenter at GB News. <laughs> Always great to see you, mate. Uh, how's it? Uh, what is going on here? Well, it's just the latest instalment of The Prince Who Cried Wolf, isn't it, Andrew, really? I mean, I think that people would have more sympathy for Prince Harry if he hadn't told such obvious whopping lies in the past. I mean, he's saying that there was no support network for him there when he came back from Afghanistan, although, as you've just seen there, he's previously praised his brother for being uh, supportive. He's also previously praised uh, another member of his staff for being supportive of him as well. I think the biggest insult here, actually, ironically, is to the veterans' community, which is a real shame because... The Invictus Games is something that Harry does really, really well. And the fact is that we're now talking about his spurious claims as opposed to the impact that war has on veterans. And he couldn't resist this sneaky little dig in the latest Invictus Games uh, Netflix series, could he? Which I think is a real shame because he knows that the royal family can't actually come back to him. But it's not the only lie or mistruth that is available in Harry's uh, stint here in the Invictus Games documentary on Netflix. He also said that the British media ignored the deaths of soldiers in Afghanistan, which is actually very offensive to a lot of people in the British media who did a huge amount of work to try to actually highlight the amount of uh, deaths and uh, the lack of support for veterans when they came back. Also, on top of that, he says that it was the British media who managed to expose the fact that he was in Afghanistan and had to pull him out of there in the first place, even though that wasn't true. It was the US media and a couple of Aussies as well. So it does appear that Prince Harry might be allergic to the truth. And I think, again, a good reason why William and Charles decided to swerve him when he's in the UK. It's just incredible how recklessly he keeps doing it. He seems to want some sort of rapprochement, but uh, then he just does this again. I mean, it's just un. Believable. And I wanted to leave that last part in there because, yes, another thing that he said was that the UK media was the one who broke the blackout. Remember, they had agreed not to say anything while he was over there. And it was an Australian and a United States uh, news agency that released the information, not the UK. We just keep hearing the same stories over and over again. And so, of course, now, because of the backlash, we're getting these kinds of articles. Harry is natural, funny, and likable. What a loss to the royal family. Um, no. Now it's come out that he was unlikable. He was unfunny. He's an alcoholic drug abuser. He is not a loss to the royal family. I think on some level, while um, William might miss him, I think William and the firm is better off realizing that he's not there.
I mean, really. And, and even then, let's not forget that they dialed back on the racism claim, hoping the family would talk to them. And when the family didn't, now he's going forward again with the racism claims. Oy. Now, let me remind you that one of Harry's honorary titles was Captain General of the Royal Marines. And there was a IRA bomb that killed 11 servicemen in Kent in 1989. So there was a memorial for them. This was a big deal. And it was on the same night as the Lion King premiere. So Harry was invited as the Captain General of the Marines to go to the anniversary memorial. Uh, and um, he said no, because he decided he was gonna go to the Disney premiere with Megan. So um, rather than attending the most important memorial they have every year and doing his duty, he was hustling his wife jobs. This was just ridiculous. Now, let me, let me just say that articles came out, as you can see right here, claiming that that didn't happen. Obvious that was completely untrue because they were caught on camera. Here's a reminder. Now keep in mind, again, while this is going on, there is a memorial service that Harry should have attended, okay? Now I want you to see it from another angle watch the Disney CEO smiling, and then as soon as Megan walks off and Harry starts talking, watch his face. So he's talking, he's being nice with Megan, there's Elton John on the left, and the second she walks off, his face drops because Harry starts talking about getting Megan a job at Disney. You can tell that this guy from Disney's been put on the spot. Now he says, I didn't know that. So Harry moves over to block the camera and as the camera comes around, you see Bob Inger's face say, well, we'd be willing to try. And you know, there you go. We're willing to try, uh-huh. Now you would hope that would be the end of it, but no, when they got to the director, the talking continued. For those of you who haven't seen it, watch this. And it was reported after that that Beyonce and JC tried to go on vacation with Harry and Meghan, but the aides said no. Personally, I think they dodged a bullet. Yep. I mean, guys, I have to tell you, Harry doesn't look like he's thriving to me. He looks like the same drugged up, oh, woe is me. Frankly, I'm waiting to hear about the dish soap commercial. Is that going to be the next thing that comes out? Because these two are broken records. We only hear the same stories over and over. I don't think Harry's ever going to get better. I think he should just go off and use his drugs. And finally, is anybody surprised to see these articles saying that um, Princess Diana is giving Meghan Markle nudges? I mean, we all know that Meghan is trying to make Harry believe that she's Princess Diana incarnate. There were rumors and stories we've discussed in other videos where she claims that Diana is speaking through her. They've had seances, supposedly, allegedly. So when this kind of stuff comes out, I think that's really bad for Harry's mental health because I think he honestly thinks that his mother has inhabited Megan's body. As disgusting as that sounds. So as I'm taping this, it is the anniversary of Princess Diana's death, so I'm using this gorgeous picture of her. Hmm. All right, you guys, leave those comments below. You know what I want. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you've already hit that button, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to go into the description box to get the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and my physical address. And for those of you who've donated to my coffee funder through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.